This is Isaiah 52 and 53. Isaiah chapter 52, the final verses, verses 13, 14, and 15, begin the description of God's righteous servant that leads into, of course, chapter 53. It's the last three verses of chapter 52 and all the verses of chapter 53. Chapter 52 is a chapter of prophecy fulfilled by the return of the remnant of, the, of 13 tribes each. A remnant of each of the 13 tribes returned to Jerusalem to build God's second temple as a holy seed. As God has forgiven their sins while they make their way back. So, chapter 52 actually ends in verse 12, which reads, for you will not depart in haste, nor will you lead in flight. For the Lord is marching before you. The God of Israel is your rear guard. Now God accomplishes this by anointing a Gentile, Cyrus of Persia, who had defeated Babylon, who had defeated the Chaldeans, they went back and forth all the time. You might say Cyrus defeated Babylon and the Chaldeans, who had defeated Assyria, where the northern kingdom uh, had been uh, deported to, all that land, all the land of Babylon. The northern kingdom was defeated by the Assyrians and deported there and Assyria imported Gentiles, presumably Arabs, into the northern kingdom. Which, this is why when they return, they all go to Judah. Now many people believe that there was ten lost tribes from the Talmud. And from, I would say, to an extent, misreading the scripture and what it, what it says or not taking it all together. Because there is a reference when Cyrus makes his declaration that he has been anointed by God to be king of all the nations of the world and he has been appointed the task by God of rebuilding God's temple in, in Jerusalem. So Cyrus issues a declaration and it is to all of God's people. It's to all 13 tribes. Any of you amongst you who want to return to Jerusalem and build this temple, you may go. Safe passage. This is how God went before the exiles of Assyria and Babylon, and how He was marching in the rear gear, uh, uh, in the rear. He got Cyrus to let them go for free. That's why there's no haste and no flight. They got to pack the stuff, make the trip plans, and head back to Jerusalem, which is not hard to find. I mean, you do have the Mediterranean there. <laughs> Just go along it long enough, and you're going to hit the promised land. And be Egypt. I, mean, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think there's any reason to believe they were lost. And the books of Ezra and Nehemiah make it quite certain. This is what it sounds, uh, this was 1 Chronicles, no, Ezra chapter 1, verse 2. Thus said King Cyrus of Persia, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and has charged me with building him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Any of you and all of his people, all of his people, May his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem that is in Judah and build the house of the Lord God of Israel, the God that is in Jerusalem. 
and then verse and then it picks up from there. So the chiefs of the clans of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites, which is the thirteenth tribe. So you really have thirteen and ten, not twelve and ten. There's three tribes right there. All whose spirit has been roused by God. They got ready to go up to build the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem. And this is what Ezra has to say in chapter 3, verse 1. And this has to do with the returning of the exiles. When the seventh month arrived, the Israelites, being settled in their towns in Judah, the entire people assembled as one man in Jerusalem. When the people of Israel gather as one man, it is all twelve tribes and the priestly tribe of the Levites as Israel, which is how some people interpret Isaiah 53, to be the people of Israel by the name Israel, when they gather as one man. In 1 Chronicles chapter 9, verses 2 and 3, the first to settle in their towns, again the exiles, on their property that they took when they got back, nobody had been there, during the exile were Israelites, priests, Levites, and temple servants, while some of the Judaites and some of the Benjamites and some of the Ephraimites and Manassehites. There's two more tribes. Where are these lost tribes? Everybody comes back. God's prophecy was, I'm pulling them all back. In the four corners of the earth, which would have been the Middle East in that day and time, as far as anybody knew. So we know Benjamites came back, Judahites, Levites, Manessahites, Ephraim, and which, by the way, Manasseh, Ephraim, and Judah were the largest landholders. Those are the names you're going to mention. And, of course, you will mention the priestly tribe, the Levites, and not necessarily the smaller lot owners of the great partition by Moses and Joshua in the promised land. Verses 13 through 15 are combined multiple verses by quotes, except most renditions of the translation of the Hebrew to English don't have the quotes. The Jewish Publication Society, who decided to start from scratch in 1956 or 7 and just get the original Leningrad Codex, the oldest Hebrew text that we have on the Hebrew Bible, and they started from scratch. It's the best rendition you can find. A lot of it because of the knowledge in the world in 1957 versus lots of renditions that are used from back in the Talmud days. Shabbat.org. They use a version that has the commentary of Rashi, does not have the quotes. And it is important. It shows the demarcation between verse 12 and 13, 14, and 15, describing the righteous servant in Isaiah 53, 10, and 11. That also goes for Art Scroll, a great 